perfect. Yeah, thank you so much for for taking the time, first of all, and also for just responding to me. A lot of people that I reach out to, they're just like, is this some kind of phishing scam or something? So um, I always have to like go in there with a little bit more collateral with like my email or uh, other things. But I just watched the show this weekend. I binged it. Um, it was awesome. We were rooting for you. We're so glad that finale was insane. So we're, we're gonna get into all that stuff right now, okay? <laughs> So how does it feel to have one finding magic mic? Oh, um, yeah, it's starting to set in. Uh, I didn't expect to win, honestly. My goal was to make it to the finale. Yeah. But I didn't know I was going to win. So yeah, I, words couldn't express how I felt. Yeah. How has your life changed since it aired? Oh, it's, it's night and day. I mean, I went from training, training to be an Olympian and uh, I was substituting uh, at a high school. Um, and then all of a sudden now I'm dancing <laughs> as my job. So it's like, it's really weird, but you know, I'm, I'm here for the journey. Have you ever, had you ever done any kind of like professional dancing or any like leisure dancing? Leisure, like at home when no one's, no one's there. I'm gonna push out the furniture to the ends of the room. And <laughs> music can go for it, even if I look crazy. And sometimes I'll record myself and I'm like, ugh, that was gross. So yeah. no, no professional training though. Okay. Well, I mean, you made it look pretty easy. I'm sure that all of the all of the edit all of the editing did its job, right? To make sure that you guys all look like you were um, professionals already. So uh, yeah, I made bet it. it I bet it took a lot of work. Yeah. So how or why did you get involved in uh, Finding Magic Mike? Yeah, so um, it was random, honestly. Um, I saw the casting through social media and I decided to randomly submit. I didn't think they would hit me back up. Um, but I just did that one week and I went on with my life with, with training for the Olympics. Um, and then ironically, I got hurt. Um, and I was like, what am I going to do now? I can't go to the Olympic trials what am I doing my life and then they called me like 30 minutes later like hey we think you'd be great for the show mm. and and I was in this mode where I was panicking I didn't know I was at a crossroads and then the, a producer called so I think everything kind of just worked out like it was supposed to nice that's where you were meant to be really <laughs> right <laughs> yeah what would you say was the hardest part of the whole process Ooh, great question Oh, the hardest part. I would say the rehearsals, honestly, um, with no dance experience, having to dance 10 to 12 hours, sometimes 14 hours a day, my body was just really going through the first couple of weeks. And then eventually I was good. But um, yeah, my body was sore for a good couple of weeks when we first started. So that was, that was kind of difficult to get through. I'm sure you didn't have to go to the gym those days. <laughs> Uh, if we did, I didn't. I stayed in my room. <laughs> and what was uh, what were some of your favorite challenges or your favorite challenge? Oh, so my favorite challenge would probably be the first performance. Um, just because it was the first one, we had never done anything like that. I know I haven't. Dancing on top of a pool with Very beyond cool. like, yeah. Come on, and I'm gay, so like. You know, it made me feel like Britney Spears and Lady Gaga or a little Nas X. <laughs> so I was in my element, right? Uh, that was amazing because it was just new. There was people in the pool. There was helicopters. So the first performance for me was everything. I remember watching that and I felt like, because it was what, the first episode, right? Or like the first couple episodes. And I remember <laughs> seeing all of you up there and I said, you know, it doesn't matter really who wins at this point in the game. <laughs> I think that itself was like an experience that you guys will never forget because even, you know, just people that didn't even imagine themselves there to be in front of all those people in Vegas on top of that pool, it's mm -hmm. probably a big energy boost, right? So I definitely mm -hmm. see how that would be a standout. Yeah, for sure. It felt like a, it was surreal. It felt like a dream. Um, after we finished our last uh, dance routine for that night, um, I just sat there and looked around and I was just uh, amazed at where I was at that point, so from where I was to there. It was just mind boggling, you know? Yeah. You mentioned that you didn't 
think that you were going to win, that your goal was to get to the finale, right? But were there any moments during the finale where you definitely felt that Nate had you beat? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, little subtle things where, I mean, it may be petty to some, but uh, he was getting a lot of camera time, for an example. Like the camera was just following him. <laughs> I think I'm gonna win. I was like, I don't, I'm, I'm not getting any camera time. So I was like, Oh, no. uh, but as silly as that sound, I seriously thought like, oh, maybe I'm just like not going to win now. Um, and then, I mean, at one point of the finale, I kind of got frustrated. I think I was just overwhelmed with the whole process and mm -hmm. how I got to that point. Um, but shoot, once the once we stepped on that stage, you know, the athleticism just kind of snapped in and I just went for it. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. insane. That I, I can't imagine like, all of what it was 11 dance routines in a week that you guys had to learn. Oh my gosh, I still can't wrap my head around 11 routines in five days. I mean, I, I still don't know how we did it. Uh, I think I was on autopilot by that point, so I can't tell you how I did it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really, the, the highlight there is those freaking aerial routines were just insane like to see you guys progress on the whole show, you know, from where you guys started to like being able to do that stuff was really impressive. And I think that that alone, you should be super proud of yourself to be able to accomplish that alone. Yeah, yeah, that was that was some um, hard stuff. I've never done anything suspended from a rope where you have to hold somebody else's body weight as well. So that was quite challenging, but it was fun towards the end. At first, I kind of dreaded rehearsals for Ariel because it was very painful. Yeah. Um, we got used to it. Um, it became fun. Yeah, well, I mean, looked awesome. <laughs> so uh, changing gears a little bit of here, on the show, you opened up about being sexually fluid. Um, mm -hmm. Why did you choose to come out on the show? Honestly, um, I was just ready. For so many years, I know people can relate for so many years. Um, I was, I guess, in the closet. Well, for me, I wasn't because I know who I am, right? But for others, I wasn't out. Um, I knew my mother knew maybe a, a, the guys that I dated um, and a few close friends, but that was about it. Um, and I always felt as an athlete, I had to be politically correct. I couldn't talk about my sexuality because I thought I would, I would miss out on endorsements, honestly especially as a queer Black man, I was thinking, okay, that's yeah. a no, you can't talk about your sexuality, especially what's, ha what's, what's happened to Jason Collins and Michael Smith. I was like, I got to just keep that out of the, the picture, you know? Um, but then I got to a point where if you don't want to uh, uh, network or communicate with me because of my sexuality, that's silly. So I just look at it as other people's loss. And that's where I was. I was like, I'm tired of living my life based on other people's expectations of what they think I should be um, and just live my life. And um, the show also created a safe space for the guys to be transparent and vulnerable and open. And, and also the castmates, everyone was very open about stuff. And it just made me feel like, okay, it's time. And so I made the decision to come out and I'm glad I did, you know? Was that something that you had shared with the guys off camera before that moment, or was that like the first time they heard it? Um, yeah, so I shared it with um, the individuals kind of individually. Uh, so mm -hmm. I know I opened up to Geo, he was the first person off, but I opened up to him during lunchtime, and he was like, Oh, that's cool, bro. I was like, Really? Because I didn't expect that. Um, and then after that moment, I was like, maybe I can do this. And then I started to open up a little bit. And then that scene that they showed, I was talking to Adonis and Merlin. And as yeah. we know, Merlin about his too. It, it just created a space where I could be open as well. Yeah, that's great representation. And I'm very inspiring. And I think that that definitely helps people to feel like that spaces like this show really mm -hmm. are inclusive for everyone, right? So yeah. Um, Thank you for doing that. Um, so what has been the response from viewers or friends and family after you shared all of that about yourself? Yeah, it's it's been mostly positive. Um, I think five or 10 years ago, it probably wouldn't have been, but uh, <laughs> we're here now. Uh, it's been mostly positive and supportive. A, a few people have walked out of my life. That happens um, and it sucks. Um, but for the most part, it's been pretty positive. Um, I haven't gotten too much 
negative feedback, um, it's kind of a good time to come out. <laughs> so <laughs> for the people that feel like they need to just cock off, let it out now, because the world is pretty open now. So just, mm -hmm. oh. Definitely. I mean, it's so hot to be queer now. <laughs> it kind of it's trendy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. With a with a, being part of a cast with so many beautiful men, were there any times where it was just so difficult to be in a room full of like all these gorgeousness? I mean, did you have any crushes in there? Of course. I mean, for guys to be like, oh, I was keeping it professional. Yes, I was keeping it professional. But of course, I'm a look. I got two eyes. I'm single. I don't have a boyfriend. I don't got no husband. Uh, so I was looking. But I mean, I was very transparent. I wasn't sneaky with it. So if a guy looked good, I'd be like, hey, you look good. You know what I mean? And they would know. Um, and it's all about being very respectful at the end of the day. Um, like Nate, he's one of my really great friends now. Um, and, and, and I know Nate's very good looking. I tell him, bro, you're good looking. And, it, and that's okay. Like you can have hetero friends and tell them they look nice and vice versa. Um, but yeah, there were some good looking guys on the set. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they knew what they were getting themselves into as well. I mean, you know, you go to their shows all the time. There's bound to be at least one guy in the audience and hey, they're probably the best tippers anyway. So we are, <laughs> they're they going to learn. Our way. Right, exactly. <laughs> they make it rain for sure. <laughs> so has it set in yet that you are this like sex symbol, this like icon now for the LGBTQ community? I know. Uh, yeah, that has definitely not set in yet. <laughs> so, I mean, if that's a thing, you know, I'm, I'm open to it. Uh, that hasn't set in yet. Um, but I mean, I'm grateful that I'm able to say I'm a part of the community now because for so many years, I've had peers that have said negative and derogative things about the community, and I've sat silent, um, and I felt so bad in those moments. Very, very similar to um, the football player that came out, or, or the bachelor player. Uh, bachelor. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Colton. Uh, I know he was saying in the locker room, the guys would say stuff, but he didn't say anything. He felt so bad. I have as well. I mean, I think that's a lot of our stories um, where I wanted to stand up. Uh, but I couldn't because I, I was so fearful of uh, rejection or criticism. But now it's different. I'm going to say something. I feel like people should speak up if someone's speaking negative about someone. Absolutely, yeah. yes. That's, those are good words to live by for sure. Yeah. What do you hope uh, viewers will learn from your experience on Finding Magic Lake? From my experience, I would say vulnerability is your power. For so many years, um, I was closed off and um, into myself and didn't want to express myself out of fear of being judged and all those things. Uh, but there is power, there's strength um, in vulnerability um, and being connected with uh, your emotions. Um, that's healthy for men. Um, I think men, we can, we can jump so many levels if we just decide to be open about things that bother us and not be closed off and communicate. I learned how to communicate better on the show as well, my mm -hmm. feelings. Um, so yeah, I would say that, honestly. Yeah, that's really great. I really appreciated how the different um, challenges or these like exercises that you all did to kind of like bring out more personality were incorporated yeah. because we do have to remember that, you know, yeah, these people that are on stage dancing and mm -hmm. sharing their bodies themselves with people, it takes a lot for you to be able to do that, right? So I really appreciated like those character driven exercises where you had to like, you know, tell an engaging story, that stuff is really important. So um, I think that that's when you all really shined. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm glad. So d on the finale of the show, it was mentioned that you and Nate were going to be invited to be a part of the Las Vegas show. So will you two be joining the shows? Well, I mean, this is, I guess, that's my first announcement. I haven't announced, announced it to anybody, but we just had a press release today. Me and Nate will be joining, joining the Vegas show um, starting January 27th through awesome. the rest. Yeah. Awesome. Will you be on the same show or alternating shows? We'll be on the same show, so same stage in Vegas on the Strip, and then I think maybe later down the year, Nate may go to the tour version, a part portion of the uh, of the franchise uh, or the show. 
Um, but I don't have that in the air just because of the new variant and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we'll be in Vegas for now. That's exciting because <laughs> I'll be in Vegas in March. So I'm going to go check hey, it out. <laughs> <you got it. laughs> so as, aside from your recent fame on Finding Magic Mike, what else keeps you thriving? I know you mentioned running, but what else? Filmmaking. So, you know, my Instagram is Dutch Filmmaker. Uh, I've been making films since I was a teenager. And I just have this, this love for cinema. I've just always loved the art of uh, production and the process of an idea going to the paper, to casting, to production, to post-production. I do it all. I color grade, I edit. I just love film so um anything creative i'm always writing and stuff so i actually just created a piece um based off the new screen uh movie that's premiering tonight okay. I, uh, I did a little piece just in celebration of the late wes craven and the new the new movie uh just because i'm a, I'm a diehard fan so i'm always doing stuff like that so nice. i just put instagram so i'm always putting out content you know nice yeah i'll share that link on the on the write-up as well so people can check yeah. it out Thanks, I appreciate it. Awesome, anything else that you wanna share that we didn't cover that you feel like you wanted to take this opportunity to say? Um, no, I feel like we covered mostly everything, but I do thank you for having me. This is a huge honor. Like I've actually been on the website several times to read stuff, so <laughs> I'm very familiar. <laughs> That's great, yeah. We, we're always looking to uh, profile anybody who you know will resonate with the readers i personally my mission as a writer for instinct is to amplify voices for people of color so somebody like you is you know definitely within my mission of storytelling and i appreciate you so much and you know the visibility that you've brought to people of color to queer people of color and i really want to congratulate you for you know this major milestone in your life and i really hope to see more from you know what you got going on. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was so nice. You know I'm a crybaby, so I'm holding it back. <laughs> oh, don't cry. Yeah, I'm a huge crybaby too. So um, <laughs> anytime anybody says anything nice, or you know, I try to think about, um, I try to deflect a little bit by thinking about other, yeah, you know, deflect. things that make give me more enraged rather than. <laughs> so you definitely, uh, you definitely cried during the show. You definitely cried watching oh my gosh yes and then like seeing also that episode where um your boy broke his leg i was like oh my gosh that's heartbreaking because you see the com camaraderie between all of you in that episode and mm. it's just sad to see that not only is like one person's dream like over in that <laughs> moment but that you know you or, Literally, that was a hard episode, right? Because that's the episode that somebody also get kicked off. But I won't share any of this in the article just to avoid so many spoilers. Um, <laughs> but but um, yeah, I mean, I definitely, there were moments where I was like, oh, I was trying to hold it back. You know, the yeah. finale, really great to see you, you know, take it. Um, but also how much Nate had also progressed throughout the show as well um i definitely cried when he took off his pants on the stage too so yeah <laughs> that was, that was, <laughs> yeah for different reasons 